After I post a jack video at the jetties to surf the pier, the most asked question, how do you know when the jacks are gonna be here? What's your favorite tackle? What kind of rods? What kind of reel? How much drag? What's the water temperature? People ask me so many jack questions that I finally decided to come here and make a jack fishing tutorial. We are gonna cover rods, reels, lures, line, lure modifications, the footwear, weather, how to catch them, everything that there is to know about jack fishing. But before we continue, if you want to be elite all year round, you want to catch jacks, other fish at the jetty, no matter where you're at, please click on the subscribe button and hit that bell notification for some of the crispiest surf fishing videos out here. And one more thing, I see that 50% of you guys are not subscribed and the other percent does not have bell notifications. Look, the information that I'm going to give you is so valuable that other creators are charging for this information on Patreon. The least you could do is subscribe with the bell notifications. Come on, don't be a freeloader. This is free. Okay. And one more thing. Also, there's a few coworkers at my job. They watch my videos all the time and I've caught these fools watching my videos on the browser. They're not even subscribed. They don't even have an account. Quit doing that. Click on that subscribe button and hit that bell notification before I come and look for you. Just know this, I know what you drive. I got your license plates. I'm going to the dark web and I'm going to find all your information. And I know where you live. I'm going to go to your house. All right, so let's begin. The first thing I'm going to discuss here, which is the most important aspect of fishing the jetties, especially for jacks, because people are always fishing jetties. That's the first place they go to when they're fishing for jacks. The most important piece of equipment that you're going to have out there is have the right shoes. Okay. I don't know how many times I go to the jetty and here I pull up, you know, with the right gear. I got the gaff. I got the shoes, everything. And there's people with jacks on the line. And what do they do? They sit there and look at the water, just staring at the jack while it's flopping there. They're just looking at it. And then they see me, they hear me coming because of my shoes and they look at me. And I'm like, what? What do you, what, what's up, bro? $10 per gaff. I'm just kidding. But anyways, in some of, in other videos, I've lost like hours of fishing because I have to gaff everybody's fish where I got to go down to the bottom, which is why it's important to get the right footwear do not depend or rely on others when you're fishing at the jetty anywhere as a matter of fact get the right footwear what i think you should get is some cleats metal cleats that's going to help you gain the traction to go to the bottom but if you find boots with metal cleats at the bottom that's even better because you're going to need the ankle support i've seen people at the jetty with cleats and they roll their ankles because those rocks are steep they step and they roll their ankle and they fall and then they slide to the bottom and then they're all wet Hey, I even seen people out there with flip flops and Crocs and I seen some dude walk to the bottom in Crocs to get his jack. He slipped, he hurt his back and he hit the back, he hit at the back of his head pretty hard. He was bleeding. I've seen that happen so many times. It's ridiculous. There's no excuse. Get the right footwear. No excuse. Do not compromise your safety. All right, next up, we're going to talk about rods and reels. I personally like to use bait casters. Okay. The reason I like using bait casters is because I feel like I am much more accurate. I can cast further. And to me, it's a lot easier to work lures with a bait caster, whether I'm casting spoons or swim baits. My favorite bait caster right now, I'm using the Okuma Komodo 463LX. I am a left-handed reeler. So that's why I got the LX version of it. I am pulling in jacks really fast with this if you watch other youtubers videos they're taking 10 15 minutes to reel in a jack i take three minutes to reel in a jack with the okuma komodo why it's because it has so much drag so much capacity that as soon as i get that hook set and i have a musky rod on it too so it's a broomstick once i set that hook it's so hard hooks get engraved into their mouths and they fight off and all i do is crank the drag down even more and that jack's only gonna swim for about one more minute and i'm fighting it and of course you know they have a last stand that once they get to the jetties they dive down i'm able to stop them right away because this reel has the right drag it has the right gear ratio also which is important I like to use a high, not a high speed, but like a 6.1 ratio, which the Komodo has. If you have anything with a higher gear ratio when you're using a bait caster, you're going to lose torque. And that's important. 
I am putting at least 10 pounds or 15 pounds of drag on these fish. When you have that much drag, they ain't going anywhere. Like I said, you know, I can land these jacks under five minutes like nothing. If you're gonna be using a spinning reel, I recommend that you get a reel that is a 6,000 and up. You can at least hold 200 yards of 50 pound braid, at least. Next up, the rods. Here's another important factor. You gotta have the right rod. I like to use what they call jetty rods, and that's usually a rod that's from eight to nine feet. Now, I don't like them too flimsy, but, but I like them stout enough that when I set that hook, that treble hook or that hook is gonna engrave into the fish's mouth real good because you're gonna need the backbone for these fish. So I recommend to get an eight foot to a nine foot rod that has heavy backbone. So you're gonna be looking at getting a rod that's rated extra heavy that can at least cast two to five ounces. That is my favorite rating to look for jacks, two to five ounces, extra heavy. My baitcaster, my Komodo is on a musky stick. This thing is a broomstick. It can stop anything. I mean, <laughs> when I cast a three ounce spoon, it is, it's not even loading. But the reason I got it is because I can, use, I can have it for double duty, but as soon as I set that hook and I have that Komodo with like 15 pounds of drag and I set that hook, that rod's gonna bend and that hook is gonna be stuck in the fish's mouth and you're not gonna lose it. So you wanna look for an eight to nine foot rod that can cast at least two ounces that is extra heavy rated. That is the perfect rod for jack fishing. Now, I have all my reels spooled with 50 pound braid. As long as you have 50 pound braid, some people even like to use 65 pounds, but really, it's up to you. Don't go under 50. If you're gonna, if you're thinking that you're gonna go to the jetty and get you with a ultralight setup, a 2000, 3000 size reel, and you're spooled up with 20 pound braid, like you're gonna go catch trout, you're not gonna land a jack. That simple. You're just not gonna land it. It's gonna take you forever, and you're gonna get cut off. It's not smart. Upgrade your gear, get heavy poundage line. Now, the leader, that's also just as important. I've seen people out there with 100 pound leaders. Smart, you're not gonna get cut off, but that affects your action on the lures that you're using. So I like to use 60 pound fluorocarbon. 60 pound fluorocarbon is tough and it's also invisible. Trust me, the jacks can see that leader. I like to use soft steel 60 pound fluorocarbon it's stretchy, it's almost, it's completely invisible actually, and it's actually cheap. You can go to Soft Steel USA on Google, search it up, and they'll have all the fluorocarbon that's available. I like to use a 60 pound, it's not as expensive as the Yozuri stuff, but works just as good. And actually, my last Jack video, I was using the Soft Steel 60 pound, and at one point, the Jack was rubbing the rocks. Right as I was pulling it up, a lot of people would have lost it then, but I have the right leader, soft steel, 60 pounds. I didn't lose it, I was able to land that jack. And that was probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest jack that was landed that day too. Almost everybody's catching jacks on the spoon, whether they get it from Amazon, they spend big baller money and go get a cast master at 15 bucks. We're all catching jacks on spoons, all right? The next question that people ask me, how do you work the spoons? Well, that varies. It depends where these jacks are in the water column. Sometimes they're at the bottom, sometimes they're in the middle, and sometimes they're on top. The way to find out is, of course, cast your lure out, and I'm gonna simply start out, when I hit the jetty or the pier, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna give it a, you know, a quick cast. I'm gonna cast it out and I'm gonna reel in quickly. I like to use the three ounce spoon so it can stay subsurface because most of the time I feel like the jacks are in that area of the water column. So all I gotta do is just reel it in, you know, semi fast and that'll leave the lure subsurface. And a lot of times I get strikes like that, but sometimes they're in the middle, which what you have to do, you gotta cast it out, jig, get it to the top, reel in, jig, get it to the top, reel in, and jig. So what you're doing is basically you're gonna be casting it out, letting it flutter down, bringing it back up, reeling it in. And you do that in motion over and over because that's gonna work the water column in the middle and the jacks are gonna hit that lure on the drop immediately. So if they're at the bottom, of course, you're gonna cast out. 
which let me just mention this if you are at the jetty and you're fishing the bottom jigging I mean you're living dangerously because there's a ton of snags down there when I'm fishing the bottom this is especially important when you're fishing for bull reds with swim baits also you're gonna cast out as far as you can really far start jigging the bottom once you feel like you're getting close to the jetty to the rocks I immediately just start to reel in because there's no point in jigging the rocks you might end up losing your spoon or your lure and then you're, con you're providing all this trash and you're losing spoons and now you're polluting the water. So basically once I see that my line is within vision, let's say like if I see my fishing line that's like 20 yards in front of me, I'll start reeling in really quick because more than likely your spoon is going to be close to the rocks. But most of the time I get them on the drop or I get them subsurface. Of course if you see that the jacks are on the top, they're feeding on top, you'll see them blowing up because they start boiling that water. You cast right at them and reel in quickly right on top of them and they'll, they'll hit that bait real quick. Now next up, this is another question that I am asked a lot, is jetty season. There, in my opinion, there is no such thing as jetty season. If you're a subscriber, which you should be if you're watching this video, I fish the jetties year round. There's no such thing as jetty season, all right? That's that's some fair weather stuff right there. If you're a fair weather ragger, you're gonna call it jetty season because you're only, when, you, when people say that, they only mean, oh, when we fish for jacks at the jetty. Let's be honest, all right? There is no such thing as jetty season fish are always at the jetty you'll see me catching fish reds drum jacks everything kings kings you catch in the summer but anything else you'll catch it year round at the, at the jetty there's no such thing as jetty season all right now the question is when do the jacks arrive well it's complicated you know i like to look for water at 65 degrees but i've seen jacks come up to the jetties or the piers when the water is 62 degrees you know so what you're going to look for is water temperature in that area at first at the beginning of the year you got to have the right weather conditions all right the wind has to be subtle five to ten at first to get that clean water coming in in the spring and that will slowly bring in jacks and then after that, if it starts to change rough, where the waves are rocking, the wind is blowing 20, you have a chance. It just makes it miserable for you to fish. For everybody else, the, you know, like I said, you know, the fish don't care about the wind. They also don't care if it's raining. Most of the time that I've caught jacks, the weather sucks. And when I mean that it sucks, it's raining, it's gonna rain, and it's about to rain. I don't really have really good luck catching jacks when it's completely flat and green because there's no action, there's no water activity, there's no tidal movement, and sometimes the jacks can see a little too good, so they are less likely to hit your baits. They're gonna be reluctant. Like I said, in the spring, water has to be at least 62, 63 degrees. The water has to be clean and possibly green, but after that, once they're there, they're gonna be there for a week or two, and after that, they're gone. You're gonna have to wait for another green tide to come in and move these jacks in. All right, so jacks are very specific. You know, they you have to have the right conditions. That is some of the best information I can give you right now for jack fishing at the jetty or the piers. So I hope you subscribe, hit those bell notifications so you can get my next video. A lot of people in the comments are saying, oh, you haven't posted in a month. Well, actually I have. You just don't have notifications on. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks y'all. Thanks for watching.